My thanks to Holistic Management International and each of you for this opportunity to join you, even remotely. I'm really disappointed I couldn't be there in person. As many of you know, this is my home area. And uh, anyhow, I'm just sort of caught up in Washington and sorry not to be there. So on with it. As Agriculture Deputy Secretary and someone from your neck of the woods, I'm delighted to be part of the conference focused on gains New England women in agriculture have made with the help of a USDA grant. Three years ago, USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture awarded Holistic Management International a grant for over $639,000 under the Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. Now, with some end of training evaluations in, you're reporting solid results in writing business plans, making marketing decisions, monitoring soil health and other areas that are key to whole farm planning. For reasons like these, I feel that USDA's Beginning Farmer and Rancher Program is among our most important. With just 1% of our population now living on farms, this program helps us address pressing issues about the next generation of farmers and the future of American agriculture. There's no question that women are vital to that future. Three years ago, USDA released the Census of Agriculture. One of the stunning points coming out of that census was the fact that the total number of women operators rose 19% from the previous census. Not only does that gain significantly outpace the increase in the number of farmers overall, but means that more than 30% of U.S. farm operators are now women. The numbers tell us that women's presence in U.S. agriculture is strong and growing. And the Secretary and I have been paying close attention. That's why soon after that census, and not long after taking office, we launched the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. Through this initiative, we've been focusing on the opportunities created for farmers by the growing importance of local and regional food systems. Direct farm-to-consumer sales doubled between 1997 and 2007 to 1.2 billion. And total local food sales, including sales to regional distributors, retailers, and restaurants, hit 5 billion by 2008. These markets are growing fast. And new markets mean jobs, new jobs in producing, processing, and marketing food. Since 2009, our Know Your Farmer team has been coordinating resources across the department that support local and regional food systems. These are resources like high tunnels. I'm sure many of you are familiar with hoop houses, as they're also known. They extend the growing season, reduce inputs, and boost revenues. They've been highly successful since 2010, when USDA first made funds available to share the costs of their construction under the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. Thanks to this program and producer passion for conserving resources and diversifying crops, there are almost 4,500 new high tunnels across the United States in the past two years. In fact, through USDA's Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative, there are about 93 high tunnels here in Massachusetts, 129 in Vermont, and 154 in New Hampshire with many more throughout the New England states that have received cost share funds from USDA. Farmers are building these high tunnels with financial assistance from our Natural Resources Conservation Service. But this is just one way, one way among many, that USDA is helping farmers sell locally and regionally and keep more money in their pockets. To help you locate and use USDA resources, the Secretary and I launched the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food Compass just a few weeks ago. This is a practical working document. It's an electronic document, an interactive map, and it's important to every beginning farmer. With it, we're putting a tool in your hands. You can display the Know Your Farmer map, for example, by topic, program, or type of recipient. Through this digital guide, we're helping farmers, ranchers, businesses, and communities navigate USDA resources and programs that are useful to them and learn more about what USDA is doing. You can zoom in on Vermont and read about a feasibility study to expand slaughter capacity in East Braintree, made possible by a Rural Business Enterprise Grant. You can localize and see that there are two high tunnels in Auburn, Maine, and that a SARE grant is helping Maine's fiber industry reach its economic potential. Or focus on upstate New York, read about a value-added producer grant that will help market a line of wines made from grapes that survive bitter North Country winters. In New Hampshire, the Women's Rural Entrepreneurial Network has received a Rural Business Enterprise Grant. This will help start a local works farmer market from Berlin to Bethlehem 
Nine businesses have already committed to this project. This is the kind of information and support women in agriculture need. As I talk with farmers across the country, whether they grow avocados or raise beef, they're looking for better ways to move product from the farm to the marketplace. This is especially important to small and mid-sized farmers. These growers need infrastructure, logistical, and marketing support. As women's presence in agriculture continues to grow, as you run more farms and ranches, operate more land, move to the next business level, and continue to produce a greater value of agricultural products here in this country, you need to tap USDA's resources. The Compass will help you do that. Turning now um, for a moment to a policy note on the Farm Bill. Uh, I want you to know that Secretary Vilsack and I feel strongly that the upcoming Farm Bill should promote fair and diverse markets at home and abroad for farmers, ranchers, and growers of all types and sizes. It should expand opportunities for producers interested in local and regional markets and continue work to support specialty crop producers. Regardless of the size of the operation or what folks want to grow or raise, we should encourage the next generation to become farmers, ranchers, growers. My thanks again for this chance to be part of your meeting, and thanks for your contributions to the health and well-being of New Englanders, to the growing importance of local and regional food, and to the future of American agriculture.